Dharma warriors going into battle with ignorance, craving, defilement, clinging, suffering. It's an old image, an old analogy. It goes way back to the early texts. But before we take it on, it's good to think about how genuine warriors fight. Especially noble warriors, because those were the warriors in the time of the Buddha. To begin with, they put a lot of time into practice, a lot of fundamentals. And it wasn't the sort of thing that you would do only when you felt like it. Practice every day. You don't feel like meditating, you meditate. You feel like meditating, you meditate. You learn how to put your preferences aside. And of course, the wise way of doing that is learning how to Put yourself in the right mood, even when you don't come to the meditation with the right mood. I mean, you sit down, get yourself in the right mood to meditate. And John Sawat often made this point. Develop a sense of conviction, develop a sense of feeling inspired by the meditation. As you sit down to do it. So if you find yourself sitting here wondering why you're doing this, looking at your breath for another whole hour after you've been looking at the breath for the whole day, remind yourself this is something you really want to be good at. And you want to be able to hold on to this refuge of the breath in any situation. I had a friend when I was back in school who was in ROTC training, he told me about one time they were supposed to run a couple miles, and at the very end they'd gone all the laps they were supposed to do. The instructor said, okay, another half mile. And of course the reasoning there was that if you're out on the battlefield, there's no determining ahead of time how far you're going to have to run, how long you're going to have to fight. So just when you think you've gotten to the hill. You've secured a safe place. You look over the other end of the hill, and there's this huge army coming. Okay, we've got to be willing to fight them too. So you practice this way. Sit down and think. Well, even if I don't want to do this, I feel I've done enough for today. Maybe I should do a little bit more just to see how gradually push the envelope and do it in such a way so that it's not drudgery and not boredom. Try to find something to get interested in. This, I think, was one of the reasons why John Lee became so good at the breath. He kept on finding new and entertaining ways of breathing. The ability to entertain yourself in difficult situations, that's an important element in being a good warrior as well. Thomas Mann wrote a novel based on the story of Joseph. He wrote four books. It was a four-volume novel, a huge thing. And one of the main events in the story is that Joseph gets caught and thrown into prison. And so while he's in prison, he finds ways of entertaining himself. He starts interpreting dreams. He interprets his own dreams. He interprets the dreams of his fellow prisoners. He starts interpreting the dreams of his wardens. And it's through this that he eventually gets called in to interpret the dream of the Pharaoh. You know, the one about the seven lean cows eating up the seven fat cows. And it's through his ability to entertain himself that he got placed in a position of power. So as a meditator, you've got to learn how to entertain yourself with a meditation. Set up little interim goals for yourself. 
try new ways of breathing. One way doesn't work, I'll ask, well, what's the exact opposite of what I've been doing just now? Try that for a while. And find ways of keeping the practice interesting. Because that's the first requirement of a good warrior, is you've got your skills honed, and you keep them honed. So that even when you don't feel like meditating, you can still do it skillfully. The second point that's good to remember is that good warriors, when they can, they choose their battles. I mean, there are, of course, there are many times where you can't choose the battle, an issue comes up, and you've got to deal with it. But there are other times when you have the choice. You can attack or not. You can fight or retreat. And if you're in a position where you can choose and you realize that by attacking, you've got a clear objective, and if things aren't working out, you've got a good place to retreat to, okay, go ahead and attack. But if not, if you're not really ready for the battle yet, find some way of delaying it. There's that biography of Eisenhower. They pointed out that during the 50s there was a lot of saber-rattling in Congress. When you attack the communists everywhere they were. And Eisenhower kept us out of a lot of wars. He was able to do this because he was a soldier. He didn't have to prove himself. No one could accuse him of being a coward because he had already proven himself in World War II. But as a good soldier, he realized that there are some wars that are just not worth fighting. And others that were best delayed until you're in good shape and ready to take them on. So as a meditator, you should have the same attitude. We all know that eventually we want to gain insight, and eventually there are lots of things we want to do in the path to gain insight, gain understanding about the ways of the mind. But if your foundation isn't solid enough, you're not going to be able to tackle these things properly. And they overwhelm you. So in particular, as you're developing concentration, work on the concentration every chance you get. And if an issue comes up and you're not ready to tackle it yet, in other words, if you try tackling it and you realize you're just getting yourself sucked into that old mind state, pull out, go back to the concentration. And this ability to pull out is going to be a lifesaver. When I learned Thai boxing, the first thing they taught was how to retreat. That's your lifesaver in all situations. The question sometimes comes up, you know, at what point do you stop doing concentration practice and start doing insight practice? And it really depends on the issue. Some issues come up in your mind, you look at them and immediately see right through them. Okay, those are things that you can work with, work on some insight. And others, they come up and you think about them a little bit, and an insight comes. But there are others where you think about them and think about them, and all of a sudden you find yourself tied up in that old mindset. Get out of that as fast as you can. You're not ready for it yet. Which means that with rudimentary concentration, you can start gaining rudimentary insights. And as the concentration gets more and more developed, not only stronger, but also quicker. And you can start dealing with more difficult, more subtle issues in the mind. The two processes go together. So as a drama warrior, you want to make sure you've got your skills well honed, and that you gain a sense of which battles are worth taking, taking on and which ones are not. In this way, you become a wise warrior, a warrior who survives, comes out victorious.
and even though you may have to lose a few battles along the way, and retreat. You're not embarrassed to retreat if it's necessary. You do. We dreamed it having a much larger strategy, so even though you may lose a few battles, you win the war. Even when you're losing, remind yourself, at least you're, you put up a fight. It's better than people who don't put up a fight at all. John Mahabhu has this phrase, he says, when you don't put up a fight, you just give in to your defilements. How can you say that you lose? Because you didn't even fight. You just let them trample all over you. Because at least a warrior has a goal. Look at how many people live their lives without any clear goals or goals that are going to end up and disappoint them. And there's an old phrase, he who dies with the most toys wins. Well, he who dies with the most toys still dies, and you can't take your toys along with you when you die. And you lie there in your deathbed looking at what you got his toys. What a waste. Because that's the battle, the ultimate battle that you're really working on, is how are you going to face death? What skills are you going to bring into it? It is possible to die with skill in such a way that there's no clinging, no craving, no suffering. And a life spent working on developing the skills for that battle is a life that's truly well spent. So keep working on your skills. They may be tedious, but you can make them not tedious if you use your ingenuity. The battle may be long, but at least you do your best. And at the end of your life, you look back and you say, well, at least I did my best. That's a much better life to look back on than when sort of threw away the opportunities to practice. There's honor and nobility in the life of a Dharma warrior. Those are words that tend to disappear in our culture, but you can revive them for yourself if you want.